Okay, we're going to take a look at the structure of proteins. So you should recall that a protein is just a chain of amino acids. If you've learned about transcription and translation, if you've learned about enzymes, then you should understand this a little bit. So a protein is basically a chain of amino acids. And each amino acid looks like this. Um, with an NCC in the middle and a CU, a COOH, CU, that makes acids CU. And there's an R group here that can be one of 20 different things. And these are all the different types of amino acids. And look at how they can be, uh, they're all the same with the H2N and the CU, right? But the R group is what's different for some of these. And so some of them, they can be grouped into different categories here. Hydrophobic ones that don't like water. Uh, hydrophilic ones that like water. There are some that are more basic in structure or alkaline and some that are more acidic in structure. Some have these uh, complex uh, organic groups attached to them as well too. And some are just called small. But the point is, a chain of these amino acids actually... Uh, folds into a complex three-dimensional shape and the shape that it folds into really depends on the order of the amino acids here and so you can end up with these really complex looking proteins so that means something like uh, let's pick a protein like amylase salivary amylase which is an enzyme in your saliva that breaks down starch into maltose every amylase molecule in every human being um, is exactly the same. You could take someone else's amylase from someone else's spit, put it into your mouth, and it'll do the exact same function for you because amylase has the exact same three-dimensional shape. I don't know which one of these is amylase, but th exact same three-dimensional shape, which means the actual makeup of that enzyme protein, amylase, has the exact same sequence of amino acids in it. And it's all coded for by one particular gene in all of our chromosomes, basically. So we're going to look at the four levels of protein structure. And uh, we're going to go into this in more detail in the next video when we look at intramolecular bonding inside proteins. And you'll see exactly how these interactions can affect the shape of an actual protein. So main things to keep in mind. Proteins have all kinds of functions. They can be hormones, enzymes, antibodies. They can be structural proteins. Their shape is super duper important. It's what gives them their chemical properties. And their shape is determined by primarily the sequence of amino acids that are coded for by a gene. And then how those amino acids in a row actually interact and fold into a three-dimensional shape, basically. So, uh, there are four levels, and we call it one, it's, it's written like this, but this is actually read primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Make sure you can spell those words. So the primary structure is just the sequence of amino acids. It's the number of amino acids and the sequence of amino acids. And remember that these amino acids, uh, the, we, we produce these, these uh, proteins and in a ribosome, based on instructions from the DNA, from the gene. Uh, actually, it's uh, a, a piece of mRNA, messenger RNA, that was trans transcribed from a gene and sent to a particular ribosome. So that's the primary structure. Uh, the secondary structure is how this one chain then kind of uh, mini-folds, does mini-folding. And the mini folding can either be in alpha helixes or in alpha helixes a kind of where that one chain kind of spirals like this or beta plated sheets where the chain can be folded into sheets like this. We're going to see this lower and in the next video as well too. The tertiary structure is how that one little spiral spinning structure or folded structure folds again on itself like super folding and then that becomes that starts to make the thing really three-dimensional so think of the tertiary structure as 3d when it starts to become 3d and the quaternary structure is when you have um, more than one of these polypeptides actually joining together hemoglobin would be uh, an example of that so if you take a look here this the particular sequence of amino acids these are the names of the various amino acids. You don't have to memorize these, thank goodness, um, is the primary structure. And then 
an area like this might be the secondary structure, like an alpha helix, and then how the whole thing then starts to fold. These arrows mean the beta plated structures, how the whole thing folds in upon itself. It's called the tertiary structure. And then when you put one, two, three, and four of these globs together, that's when we're talking about the quaternary structure. So the three dimensional shape becomes very important. And if you're thinking about an enzyme, um, you know, the active site could be over here or over here. I don't know where it is in this particular lysozyme protein. But this is what uh, makes the shape of an active site so important. So there are two different types of proteins. They're fibrous and globular. Globular sounds more like they're globs. And so these are more round and you're, they're usually soluble in water. Enzymes are usually globular proteins. There are some examples here. Fibrous proteins are more structural. They're mostly insoluble in water and they have very long and narrow shapes. So for example, myo myosin, I just combined these two, myosin in muscles um, are long fibrous proteins. Collagen, which is important in everything from skin, uh, connective tissue, and arteries, and things like that, is also a type of protein and it's a fibrous protein. And a few other special things here. Some proteins can join with other things, join with other parts. Like a glycoprotein is a protein that's connected to a bit of carbohydrate. So uh, that extra bit is called a prosthetic group, and they're considered uh, conjugated proteins because they're attached to something else. And we're going to see this. This is more important later, but some amino acids are... Oh, my goodness. I just deleted what was behind it polar and some are nonpolar and this is going to be very important uh, to determine where a particular protein is going to function. If it's mostly made up of polar amino acids then it's likely that that enzyme, that protein is going to be used in watery places like in the saliva, salivary amylase. If they're nonpolar, it might be, for example, I don't know, like a protein channel, a protein channel that helps to transfer things in and out of a cell a protein channel, if it's a protein channel, if it's going to sit in the cell membrane, the plasma membrane, I know the plasma membrane has a lot of uh, hydrophobic tails, right? So if that protein channel is going to sit there and not get pushed out of the actual membrane, then some of those amino acids around the surface of that protein channel are probably going to be nonpolar so that they can bind real nicely with the hydrophobic tails. Anyways, that gives you an idea of how the structure of a protein is very important and how it actually relates to its function, structure and function. All right, that is the overall uh, look at structure of proteins and the four different levels.